Not only has Boruto lost his entire family, Sasuke is slowly dying too. After becoming the strongest shinobi of all time, Boruto couldn't save his sensei from the dark side. The prophecy he foresaw has gotten even worse, as Sasuke is more powerful than ever with a new running gun and arm that is trying to kill him. This means Boruto's life update has gotten even worse worse. But that's only the beginning of what I'm about to reveal, as the 10 tales have evolved confirming Boruto's words from chapter 2 regarding the Claw Grimes gaining consciousness which will create the worst future. However, Code, like an idiot that he is, idiot. thinks Boruto is lying. Code's clownery becomes frustrating, as remember, he worships Otsuski, which Boruto is, and is even addressed as such in chapter 4 as Boruto Otsuski. Yeah, this dumbass no. still chooses Dona, not to so listen stupid. to him, which swiftly cuts to Boruto realizing they're running out of time. Kawagi thinks Boruto has lost the plot. Oh, come on, man. That's f He's probably got, like schizophrenia or something. Just like in chapter 77, when he talks to himself, it was Momoshiki. However, what Boruto is really doing is tracking the other Toad's location in Code's Otsuski dimension <laughs> so that he can teleport there. Was it the Karma Seal, you may ask? No. The Pure Eye? We don't even know if that's canon, bro. It's actually a new power. The Flying Thunder God. How did Boruto learn it? Don't ask questions. Just consume product. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you think I know? But this proves Boruto is him who has inherited Minato's genius. He needed an alternative way to teleport between dimensions. This is to track down code as Sasuke's red and gun was well, you know. And you're probably wondering, why didn't Boruto just use the Karma Seal? Since during and after the Ishiki fight, he can use it at will to use space-time ninjutsu. Well, the answer lies with the risk involved. Momoshiki's consciousness is merging more and more, confirmed in chapter 76. So using the Karma would mean he has a chance to take over his body. And we all know what would happen if he did. Bodies, 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 bodies! However, Boruto admits his flying thunder Rajin isn't as skilled as Minato just yet, which would mean he would be scaling towards Tobirama's use of it, which mind you is still pretty broken as his base form is already scaling towards Baryan mode Naruto. So with the slight delay of casting the jutsu, Boruto questions Code on the Ten Tails location, but in the split second it took Code to turn his head, it disappeared. Koji's Toad explains that it would be hard to think that Ko transported the Ten Tails because he's way too much of a bum to do something that's skillful. Know your f place, trash. But as you can see, this toad is wearing one of Boruto's many pins. That's right, he is more than just the most dripped out shinobi to ever live. He's also got a purpose to his fit. By giving the toad a Konoha pin, which Boruto would have marked with the formula needed to teleport, he was able to cross to another dimension. This again is another insane feat matching Prime, Naruto and Sasuke, as only those two have shown themselves to be capable of detecting each other's chakra signals across a dimension. Nonetheless, this thing shows up. Believe it or not, this right here is actually Bug. Who? You know, Bug. The guy stuck with the worst job in the series of having to watch over multiple cyborgs craft through the DNA of a literal god and can kill him at any moment. Regardless, Boruto realizes that he's too late. The worst future he saw of the Claw Grimes gaining sentience has already come around. It was only like two chapters ago they could barely string a sentence together. However, they've been busy lately turning Konoha into a garden center. Thus, their intellectual capabilities have skyrocketed. Bug goes in for the attack on Boruto, forcing him into a wall, asking if he came just to be breakfast. However, Boruto manages to escape by using lightning 
released, followed up with another flying Rajin. Code asks what's going on as he continues to stumble on the ground thanks to Uzuhiko. Seeing the sorry bloody state he's in, Boruto realizes, oh man, he's even more useless than usual, and deactivates Rasengan Uzuhiko so that they can fight against the Shinju together. As Boruto brings Code up to speed, another Shinju appears floating in the sky. Now, I can't be the only one who thinks he looks a lot like... <sighs> Chicken! He said it! He said it! He even has the Otsuski Tomoe tattoos on his stomach, something the other Shinju don't have. Plus, he is the only one levitating and flying, which we know is a natural ability to anyone with Otsuski DNA. Of course, Ishiki couldn't have been made into a tree as his body literally turned into dust. That being said, as he kindly explained to Code, all the lives on this planet, past or present, have their data stored on the planet in chakra form. Therefore, Ishiki's DNA is still obtainable by the Ten Tails. Plus, he was the owner of it in the first place, so it makes sense it would model its own physical consciousness in Ishiki's image. Either way, the Ten Tails has split itself into an army of clone versions of the people unlucky enough to become trees, using the method code so idiotically taught them. I'm pretty sure there is a Shinju out there begging for a reroll right now with their bum ass genetics he got stuck with. Like, bro, imagine you became destined to be an NPC from the one in chapter 2. I'm just saying. So, as a result of Code awakening them, he has made the Shinju degenerate. Their instinct is to no longer mindlessly devour and create a fruit, but rather they develop an ego. They're on a quest to discover something even more powerful than a chakra fruit knowledge. knowledge. This continues Boruto's core theme of technology being good or bad. Most notably, the social commentary on the recent AI uprising. ChatGPT and much more. It explores what happens when something so potentially powerful that is growing far faster than the human race can keep up with is put into the hands of somebody that is completely way out of their league. Ordinarily, the Otsuski are driven by their first for power. That is how Amada stated they would evolve. They'd conquer a planet and strip it of its resources by creating a god tree. Humanity, on the other hand, uses power differently. They use power to collectively grow stronger as people and use Ninshu to connect. This is how Naruto united the world under one umbrella during the war. However, now, these Shinju are evolving by using humanity's values. They're evolving past the Otsuski outlook, instead open to growing through other means, which of course is a dangerous combination. Meanwhile, back at Konoha, Shikamaru and Kawaki have a heated discussion. Kawaki believes Boruto and Code are working together. Remember, in Chapter 3, Boruto told Kawaki that Code and him were in the midst of important negotiations. Kawaki has no idea that he was actually trying to protect the village from the upcoming Otsuski level invasion. Sarada attempts to clarify the truth and states that he can even confirm it with Ada, but it's met with more stubbornness as Kawaki, like a broken record that he is, repeats the same thing. Borto is Otsuski and regardless of his intention, he has to die. Oh brother, this guy stinks! However, Kijimoto, being the genius writer he is, addresses the hypocrisy as the future Hokage Sarada lays down the law that Kawaki is the same, which means according to his own plan, he should die as well. Uno reverse god, bitch. At the end of his own plan, Kawaki's gonna commit suicide. Sarada's purpose as a ninja is to ensure that her village is safe. In doing so, she can't let Kawaki do as he pleases. Realizing that Sarada is already a better Hokage than he is, Shikamaru gets pissed off and reminds them that he is in charge. Embarrassing. <laughs> like, when you have to tell somebody you're in charge, that actually means you're not in charge and you're not respected, by the way. We then find out Sasuke 
isn't dead. Sarada explains that everyone is still alive, but they won't know more until they put their hatred aside and help Boruto, as he is the only one that knows the truth, which is when the Sage Toad tells them they have to escape and regroup. But suddenly, a new Hoden Shinju appears, shocking Boruto as he recognizes who it is. It's the last person he'd ever want to face. Sasuke. That's right, Batman Sensei has become a tree. During the three year time skip, Cole told us that they had a bat where Boruto had to escape with his tail between his legs. That was the time when Sasuke was unlucky enough to become a plant pot in his battle with Ko. This resulted in a new, evil version of him rising up. However, he's more powerful than ever. <laughs> Why, Lord? Why? We all dreamed for his arm and Renegon to return, and we got it. But at what cost? Everything. The Shinju use the biological data of the original to gain sentience. They also retain all their jutsu and skills. This means, at an absolute minimum, each Shinju is on par of power level wise to the person they're cloning. For example, this new Sasuke has an extremely powerful Chidori on par with Boruto's Rasengan. It can also transform its arm into a long blade due to Sasuke's immense skill in Kenjutsu. This is all on top of the powers code has given them like the ability to use the claw marks to instantly teleport and swap with other shinju plus there's the ten tails genetics combined with information they garnered from the planet's chakra so since these guys are giving boruto a difficult time who literally just <laughs> fodderized limit breaker code it's safe to say they are even stronger than jigen at base crossing into ishiki's level of power which leads Leaves me scratching my head because I'm extremely worried. What exactly are the other ninja going to do against the power creep? These guys are stronger than Prime, Naruto, and Sasuke. Oh, <laughs> I know what they would do. Oh, okay. However, the Shinju then incapacitate Boruto, where he panics to ask Code to join in and help as he's next on the hit list. But Code, being the who say he is, uses this opportunity to bounce, leaving Boruto to die as it would be a weight off his shoulders if the guy hunting him down for three years was killed. And I can't really blame him. I don't know what Boruto was thinking here. You've been actively trying to kill the dude on multiple occasions and promised him three times over the last few chapters. Of course he ain't gonna help your ass. Nonetheless, this lands Boruto in a tricky situation, forcing him to use the flying Rajin to retreat. However, it wouldn't have been possible had it not been for the Shinju's instinct to devour being suppressed by their desire to learn right now. That is the only reason Boruto escaped unharmed. In spite of this, wherever he goes, Boruto's destiny will catch up to him. That being said, his mental fortitude is far stronger than any destiny that tries to defeat him. After all, Boruto's life is heartbreaking. He lost Naruto and Hinata and was accused of killing them. He's a missing nin with a kill on sight order. Momoshiki is torturing his mind constantly and wants his body. He hasn't seen Himawari, Sarada and others in three years. 99% of the world hate the dude and don't believe anything he says. The fate of the entire world lies on his shoulders against enemies as strong as Ishiki. And finally, Sasuke became a tree and is dying. Well, at least he has Kashin Koji. He's returned to the manga after three years and four months, confirming he is Boruto Sensei. He reminds Boruto if he dies, everything will be a waste and the planet will be annihilated. The entire goal is to feed an Asusuke to the Ten Tails to bear a fruit that will consume all life on Earth. Kashin Koji explains that Boruto should have known that this future was a high possibility, yet they plan does not change. They're going to fight for a better one. Sasuke is just gonna have to wait a little bit longer as a tree. Now to enjoy more peak fiction, why not learn everything there is to know about Omni-Man from Invincible? Did you know he became Emperor of Viltrum? 